if this is okay, I'll just get started. And so this is the workshop that we give out to students who want to apply for graduate school. And in the previous lectures, you have heard uh, other faculty members tell you uh, about the application process. And I would like also, how do you contact PIs? In today's lecture, what I'm going to say, uh, talk you, uh, show you about is how do you write a compelling statement of purpose. So before we start, let me just introduce myself. So my name is Jing Jie Zhang, and I am an assistant professor from the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics from the Texas A&M University. And just a few slides about the thing that we do in the lab. So usually when I start to introduce myself, I always love oh, one thing. If you have any questions, so the chat box is open. So you can just type in the questions if you want. And you cannot even raise the hand. There's a, an option in Zoom, I think, that allow you to raise a hand so that I can see. You're welcome to interrupt me at any time. And I kind of want to make this workshop, the conversation kind of interactive. So it's not like that, that I myself is, is talking. I would also like, like if you have any questions, you can just raise your hand and ask questions. So right now you're all on, on mute, right? But if you have something you want to say, just unmute and we can, we can start from that. In order to keep you guys kind of uh, uh, focused on the presentation, if it's getting boring later on, I will also like pick some of you guys and see if you wanna participate in some of the little exercise that we do. So wanna do this in kind of the interactive way. Okay, let's go back to my self introduction. So I'm Jun Jie Zhang and I'd like to introduce myself with this, this kind of movie. Um, how many of you have actually seen this movie? It's called Epic and it has a 3D version. And as you can see in this figure, um, these are a group of tiny little men. They are called leaf men, right? They are in the forest. They have their own ecosystem. They're so tiny that if you compare them with a bird, you see, they can just ride the birds. So the reason I bring out this movie is because the thing that I'm doing in my lab is kind of like this guy on the bottom. So he is Professor Bamba. He lives in the forest, have nothing to do. What he really care about is really to, to study these leaf men. So he mount all kinds of different cameras, device, try to, try to take pictures of these little creatures and try, try to study them. And one thing is those leaf men, they're just so, so small and they move so fast. It is constantly moving around. It's really hard to capture. So Professor Bamba, who is on the bottom, he has to use a specialized goggle to slow down the motion of these little creatures and try to study what they look like. Okay, so that was the movie about. It's called Epic, pretty old movie about like seven years ago. So what I do in my lab is we study this. This is our ecosystem. This, this, the things in there, they are all my leaf men. So as you can see, this is a picture of a cell. Inside the cell, you have all these different organelles, you have molecules, and they are also move, moving around. So not like Professor Bamba, who has a specialized design goggle. For myself, I use all these multi-million dollar equipments try to study what's going on inside that ecosystem, that cell. How do these molecules move around? How do, how do they look like? How do they interact with each other? And why do we care about this? Because, uh, you know, all these living things, they're made of cells. And some of the disease, they're related to something that goes wrong inside the cell. So if, if we can understand that, we can potentially modulate them and try to treat human diseases. Okay, so like all these things I put on the bottom, some of the stuff you may know, but some of them look kind of weird. Uh, I just wonder if you guys can hear me still well, because my internet connection sometimes break up. And if you think you can still hear me, just raise your hand or 
adjusting. Is my vo voice still okay? Yep. You're doing fine. Thanks, Gigi. Okay, that's that's good. So the one that my my mouse cursor is pointing right now, that's a kind of like a robot machine. It's called Vitrobot, and it's called Vitro because it can vitrify something, make something into ice. So what we do is we actually take this cell or isolate these molecules from the cell and put them into this little robot. And what it does is it will freeze them into ice. And then we will load this uh, vitrified specimen into the electron microscope. And this is where uh, the picture taking happens. We take pictures of these cells, of these molecules inside the cell. Sometimes we have to break the cell to get the molecules out and try to study them. And then we take thousands of micrographs like this, just like Professor Bamba take thousands of pictures or photos of these leaf men. And then we process the data using the supercomputer that I'm pointing to right now. That's on the right hand side. These are just clusters of supercomputers. And then eventually we are able to generate a three dimensional image of the cell or of the macromolecules inside. So this whole process is a tool that I use in my own lab. It's called cryo-electron microscopy, or uh, the abbreviation is cryo-EM, okay? So just give you one example of what we do here. So that's kind of a result about what we have taken. So uh, on the bottom right is part of an E. coli cell. It's a bacteria cell. And you know, for these bacteria, it sometimes uh, can protrude out all these pilots, these fibrillar-like pilots, and it's bound with all these like grip, grip-like or, or sphere, spherical um, blue particles. And these particles are actually viruses that attack bacteria. So one research project in my lab is to look at how these viruses interact with the cell and eventually infect the cell. And the virus is kind of hot these days, you know, particularly about uh, because of this coronavirus that is going on everywhere in the world, right? And this is also another type of virus, uh, but instead of being harmful to human, they, sometimes they can be beneficial. These type of virus, they kill bacteria. They destroy the bacteria for us. They, we can use them as antibiotics in some sense, right? So what we do, I and Professor Bamba take pictures of these, and eventually we are able to generate three-dimensional structures of how the virus look like. This type of virus is kind of similar to the coronavirus in some sense because of the RNA, uh, its genome, as you can see all these warm-like ribbons inside, they're actually the genome of the virus. They, they kind of packed into um, like a three-dimensional structure. And the blue blocks on the outside, these are the capsid so-called coat proteins of the virus, the wrap around the virus. And there's also another receptor. This, this, this purple protein interact with the pilus. And just for visualization, what I do is I, I just remove part of the capsule, the, the blue, blue density, so that you can see the inside of this warm-like genome. In reality, it's a complete sphere. But once you remove it, uh, we can computationally use computers to remove it. Um, when I try to design this, this picture, I kind of like get some inspiration from a game. It's, that's called Pokemon Go. So that's kind of like a Pokeball on the right-hand side, right? But anyway, um, this just described the research. I hope to give you some sense, like what kind of thing that we do in the lab. And, and if you are applying for graduate school, and later on, when you go into the lab, you can pick up like different type of projects like in different labs, some of the labs do the thing that similar to us, some of the labs do something, maybe genetics or whatever. But uh, I just want to show you that really the science uh, that you're going to pursue if you want to go to a graduate school, it can be related to daily life and it's, it's lively. You can see all these images. Okay, so that's pretty much about uh, the research, uh, the career, my career. But now we are going to worry about your guys' career if you want to apply for a graduate school, right? And today our topic is going to be focused on uh, the personal statement or statement of purpose. 
So basically, this is the outline. Let's see in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to go over all these bullet points and what is a statement of purpose and how do you plan your writing of your statement of purpose. And then finally, how do you strengthen your statement of purpose to make it really impressive, right? And I also have to mention some disclaimers uh, because there are different types of statement of purpose, but this one is particularly uh, the advice I'm going to give you is on the statement of, of purpose you use to apply for a graduate school. And this is also from my perspective, my own perspective. When you Google statement of purpose on, on the internet, you can find tons of all this information about it. So some of them are really comprehensive, much, much better in some sense than what I can tell you today. But uh, what I want to show you is from my own perspective, because I'm a faculty member. And eventually, those are the faculty members who review your application packages. So what do I expect and what you can offer? So just from my own perspective, and also it does not represent uh, our department of biochemistry or bio biophysics, or does not represent uh, the Texas a and in case I say something wrong. And I know Justin has a way to just, uh, just remove all these wrong remarks in the, in the video editing software. And finally, I want to give thanks to the, the Purdue Online Writing Lab that gave me much of the material for me to prepare for this uh, presentation. So let's start by uh, with what, what's the statement of purpose. So it's also known as personal statement. When I think about statement of purpose, uh, I think of this as a love letter. Some of you may be laughing right now. So why do we think it's a love letter? How many of you have actually written a love letter here? If you have written one or have received one, you can raise your hand in the, in the Zoom. So I can, I can count, let's see. Now we have 35 people, but I don't see anyone raise their hands here. Well, yeah, no, not yet. Well, it doesn't mean you haven't received one, right? But the, the reason I, I, I give an analogy to the love letter is because in the personal statement, what I view is you also have to show your passion and also you have to show your motivation. If you just write something plain, it may be okay, but it really cannot impress people. So that's the reason I think if some of you can, can write a very well love letter, I don't, <laughs> I think probably they can just skip the state on purpose lecture. But anyway, uh, that's just my personal view about this. And it is an essential component for the application materials. Um, you know, you should have your resume, or sometimes CV in there, and you should have a letter of recommendations, have your GPA, the grades, the transcripts, personal statement or statement of purpose is also an essential component in there. Usually it's about like, you have to read the requirement from the web page of that particular department you're applying for. They have a page limitation. It's kind of, it can be one page or two pages, or sometimes it can go to three pages. So you have to read very careful about how many pages it is. But it cannot be very long. And the reason I will give you later on um, is a description of your compatibility to the program that you're applying for. So you wanna show how you can fit into that particular program. And also it complements other application material, like what I said, the CV, resume, or letters of rep uh, recommendations, okay? So how do we prepare for it? Uh, there's quite a lot of tutorials on YouTube that you can find that people tell you how, how you can prepare for a personal statement. But what I want to emphasize today is really you have to, you have to think about these two aspects that I'm listed right here, that, that I have listed right here. So first, your audience, and then yourself. If you can really appreciate these two aspects, you'll probably write a, a kind of decent uh, statement of purpose. So your audience, who, who will be your audience? Who will be the one who is reading the statement of purpose? So very likely you will be people like us, uh, particularly like people on the uh, recruitment 
committee or admission committee. These people, they are just faculty members. So how do they look like? Or uh, here are a few points about what uh, your audience will be like. So they are usually professors who are generally pretty busy and sometimes they can be very grumpy and but also hungry in some sense. Uh, the reason I'm saying they can be grumpy is because say if I describe a day of a faculty member to you, what do they do throughout the day? Like when they wake up in the morning, uh, they open their email, they, they have to check their emails in the morning, right? And they see, well, there's another email from the collaborator who is asking for an experiment that I owe him uh, maybe already for a couple of months. Okay, I have to, to fix this uh, crisis right now. Otherwise, we're gonna do this collaboration and I'm working on this. And then another thing, your graduate student knock on the door and he just said, well, well Professor Zhang, sorry, I have broken one of the centrifuge, the common use centrifuge on the third floor. You have to take care of this crisis. And now, well, now I feel a little bit nervous. And then, all in a sudden, I also got a phone call from NIH. That's the funding agency that gave us money to do research, right? And they just complain and say, hey, you're going to propose a problem. Your budget is over the limit. You have to go through this these process. So we are facing all these kind of crises all throughout the day. And we also need to teach, need to write papers, need to guide students to do the research. So it's really everything. We're kind of overwhelmed. So that's the reason why they can get grumpy. And at the same time, when they try to review your application packages and read your processes, you see with such kind of grumpy feeling and reading this, you know, how that is gonna affect you. If, if that's a state on purpose, it's really, really hard to understand, doesn't inspire the professor or cannot attract his, his attention, he's just gonna, well, it won't fly, right? So that's the reason you need to know who you are writing to, someone who's busy, but also grumpy. But as you understand that, when you write, you want to write this in a clear and, and very clear way, right? But the bright side is the people who read these application packages, they are also hungry. What do I mean by hungry? They are looking for good people. They are looking for good graduate students who are motivated. So if they really see a personal statement that show this type of motivation, they'll definitely put on to put your, put your package on top of other people. So that's something you need to write is clear, but also need to inspire them. And like I said, usually if a faculty member is in an admission committee, they sometimes have to read 20 or 50 statement of purpose in one day, or they can distribute maybe maybe 20 or something. But anyway, that's also a lot of reading. And you're comparing your statement of purpose with all the others from your peers. So how do you stand out? This is also something you have to think about. And you need to know your audience, not by just um, say, okay, I, I, I think they are grumpy, but you also need to know what they exactly do. And that's the reason sometimes going onto the department's web page and read their mission statements and application guidelines will help you because they have listed all these items, what they want the statement of purpose to address. For example, um, something about you, something about what you have done, something about what you want to do. So these are the things you need to do some research on and you can get some ideas. And particularly, look, you can look for keywords. For example, if you want to apply to the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics, at Texas a and you just Google putting bio, bio, T-A-M-U, and then that will guide you to the web page. These have listed all these information you want and the keywords such as like, like some of the research that people do. If you feel that these keywords can fit into your own um, situation, for example, if you have done some E. coli work or you have handled the bacteria, you want to mention that in your personal statement. Okay, so that's something about your audience, and what I said, the audience expect you to to say uh, to to see how you have prepared yourself and how you can contribute 
to the program and how they can help you to achieve your goal. So that's something about your audience. If you have some questions, uh, you can type into the chat box and we can go into details later in the last five minutes. And also something about yourself. So in, you need to understand yourself, like why do you want to apply for this? And you want to write this in clearly in your personal statement. You want to discuss about your motivation. Like I said, it's kind of like a love letter and how you want to describe your experience and how this experience has shaped you to let you fit into that program. And how do you distinguish yourself from others? Uh, one thing I want to mention in these experiences cannot be too much exotic, right? Otherwise it'd be weird, but you still want to impress a reviewer. So you write down something, for example, um, in your undergrad research, you have worked with E. coli, you have grown 100 plates of E. coli, and you try to uh, scrape these bacteria to get all this pili from them. So you want to write this type of experience. And when, when the people who read it, read this story, and later on, they will just remember you. you they know you are the 100 plate person. This is someone who is different from others. So this is kind of the story you want to, if you have something like that, you want to write this down and to make yourself kind of unique. You also want to describe your personal quality, talent, something that uh, the reviewing committee is looking for. For example, you are very persistent. You can sit there and doing the research, like, like growing the culture and measure how the bacteria grow every five minutes, every 10 minutes. So that's also something you want to mention. All these little details make you uh, different from other, other applicants and how, how these different qualities can shape you to fit into the program. That's something you have to think about before you start to write, write the statement of purpose. So here I have talked about so many things you want to uh, think about before you write. In this slide, I just give you uh, some of the bullet points and outline of a statement of purpose. For some of you, you may have already got one, but for some of you who have, hasn't written one. So these are the things that potentially you can use a guideline to fit into these bullet points. You can also have your own outline, doesn't have to follow this, but this is something usually a statement of purpose should cover. So first of all, like I'm applying to a program because of A, B, and C. That's something you wanna do in the future, right? And in your program, I would like to work with X, Y, and Z. So these are the faculty members or these are particular research you wanna do. You, you want to show uh, your motivation on this. So you have to list some of these information. So when the reviewer reads your package, they know that these are the things um, you have really done your research. You, you, you really care about this program. And then number three is I'm prepared for this because of DNA, because of your previous previous experience. You have scraped 100 plates of bacteria that build your persistence. You have uh, grow. Uh, you have cloned a gene that make yourself uh, your self accomplishment. That's that's your self accomplishment, right? And then eventually you want to say your program, your graduate pro graduate program will help me to achieve my goal, my final goal, because people always have a goal. If you don't have a goal, why do you go to graduate school? It's not an easy job for you. It's something you want to create uh, during your graduate school, you want to discover. So you have your goal, you want to go later on, you want to be someone. So th that's also think, something can show your passion in there. I give you this outline. For some of you who uh, participate really into the workshop later on in, the, in, in, in terms of writing, you can use this outline uh, to fit into the bullet points and you can rearrange them. Um, but I think for the, uh, for the sake of time, we do not have much time. So we probably just skip the interactive part. But that's something I want you guys, otherwise I'm just going to pick you, pick one of you to fill in these bullet points. I think we only got five minutes, so we just have to hurry. Okay, so these are my advice on how can you strengthen your statement of purpose. So like I said, highlight the research. The, the very important thing is research. You talk about your research in your resume, in your CV, but these sometimes they are just a list of facts. But here, th this is how you can really put your personal feeling 
into your description of your research. Like I said, you scraped 100 plates of E. coli just to get tiny micrograms of the pili. So that's something you can highlight it. You have gotten an award. You definitely want to mention that, how that, how that encourage yourself to be even better. And like I also said, you want to specify a few faculty members that potentially you want to work with. So that's how you can go in onto their website, the, the web page, and see whether anything that is interesting. And that's very important homework. I think Cho, Professor uh, Cho has uh, mentioned in his previous presentation that how do you contact PI, right? But, but before you contact PI or before you write the statement of purpose, you want to have some idea like, what, what, who are the people you are interested in, who you want to work with? And that definitely help you. If you're not, not really interested in the faculty members, why do you apply for this program? So you have to mention it in your statement of purpose. That's definitely a bonus, a plus for you. And <clears throat> statement of purpose is also somewhere you can explain some of your disadvantages. For example, you have a poor grade in some, in some subjects or uh, you have a gap in your education, but this is where you can mention and people are considerate, they understand, especially when you have a poor grades at the very beginning when you were not prepared, but later on your grades get better. You wanna show the trajectory. This is also a good trend. Uh, also show you, you have improved yourself. So you wanna mention that definitely in your statement of purpose. And very importantly, you need to share your statement of purpose with your friends advisors who can help you. If you cannot find them right now, at least you can probably use the Grammarly. How many of you have, have used Grammarly? It's, um, they have a free version that you just put in your text to find out potential problems in your writing. So start with that and consult your friends and advisors. For some of you who participate in this workshop, uh, I think our, we will help you kind of polish it and we go through this process, see how we can improve it. But these are the bullet points that can help you to, to improve. And also you want to avoid saying some, a few things. For example, you don't want to say something um, <clears throat> uh, that is controversial. You don't want to talk too much about religions or political issues in your personal statement because some, some of the research can really get to the controversial side these days, as you know. Uh, because of all these crises going on all over the world. So that's something you don't want to mention in your personal statement. And also, uh, you don't want to say something that is too far away, something you, you have done in your high school or even in your primary school, kindergarten, definitely a no-no, right? Uh, you want to focus on, on the undergrad because things too far away may be kind of distracting for us. So... These are just a few of my comments for you. And I think for the sake of time, can probably answer a few questions if you have typed that into the chat box. Uh, if not, maybe later on, you can also forward a question to Justin, uh, who will also forward to us to address your questions. Yeah, so, hi, Junji. Um, I addressed one of the questions a little bit in the chat, but I'm hoping you can talk about it a little more. So boring. there are some schools that specify that they want two essays. So typically something like a research statement mm -hmm. plus a personal statement. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between the two briefly? Well, as the name implies, the research statement is definitely something you want to uh, focus on the research part. So, uh, for example, what kind of experience you have previously in your research and what's your plan for your future research? Do you have a, have a vision like what particular area you want to go on to? You can be, leave them kind of general, but, but some of the specificity or be a specific will be good. So that show that you have a very clear vision. But as you write in your research statement, you want to make sure that the program you're applying for does have this particular direction or on the other hand, you can just leave it general. But this, this is basically something about the research statement. You want to focus on the research, what you have done, what you want to do in the future, and why you want to do this. And for the personal statement, it, it's more kind of like an even more general thing. Um, it, it's beyond the research. Uh, what, what you can cover in there, you can, you can talk about like the thing that I said, uh, you have a poor grades, you can explain that 
the reason for that behind that in that personal statement and how do you shape your personality so that's that's kind of the difference between those two justin you can you can uh compliment if uh no, 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 if i think you, that's great yeah um, yeah, that was in addition to some of the comments that both Professor Pella and I had made in the chat box. So I think that mm -hmm. should help answer that question. Um, yep, but I think for sake of time, we're good to wrap up. Yep. All right. Thanks for your attention. And also stay safe.